In a world where everyone seems to be on a mission to make as much profit as possible, a man named Sam Walton dared to think differently when starting his retail business. Sam believed that he could help people save money, reduce their cost of living, and ultimately improve their lives. With this goal in mind, he went on to open a discount department store to sell goods at low prices. Despite what people said, he maintained that reducing his profit margin would be the best choice for his business as well as for his customers. The result of this was the birth of Walmart, which turned out to be even more successful than Sam ever imagined. This is the story of how Sam Walton took an unpopular idea and built it into the biggest retailer in the world. Welcome to Planet Biz. Growing up in tough times. Samuel Moore Walton, more commonly known simply as Sam, grew up during one of the toughest economical situations in the history of the U.S., the Great Depression. He was born on March 29, 1918, in Oklahoma, where he lived with his parents on their farm. Even though they were a farming family, his father, Thomas Walton, soon realized that their farm couldn't provide enough income to raise children and take care of the family. So he decided to go into farm mortgaging, working for his brother's mortgage company. In 1923, the family moved away from Oklahoma, going from one small town to another, eventually settling in Columbia, Missouri. Even with Sam's father's new job as a farm mortgager, things weren't going so smoothly for the Walton family. It was during the height of the Great Depression, and so Walton had to work to help his family out financially. As a young boy, he did several odd jobs. He milked the family cow and sold the excess milk to customers. In addition, he sold magazine subscriptions and delivered newspapers on a paper route. Fortunately for Walton, he was able to get an education. He attended David Henry Hickman High School, after which he went on to college in the hopes of being able to provide better for his family. As a student at the University of Missouri, Sam continued to work odd jobs so he could get by. Sometimes he would even wait tables in exchange for meals. Just a few days after graduating from college, Sam got a proper job as a management trainee at a J.C. Penney store in Des Moines, Iowa. This was his first ever introduction to the retail business, and Sam was excited. His boss, on the other hand, wasn't. A shaky career. Walton enjoyed the retail business and he was good at it too. But there was a problem. Sam paid very little attention to paperwork. His books were a mess. It got so bad that his boss even threatened to fire him, telling him that he wasn't cut out for the retail business. This threat didn't do much to push Sam to improve his record keeping because it was his concern for customers that brought about the problem in the first place. Sam hated having to make customers wait while he did paperwork, so he would put more time into attending to customers and focus very little on making sure his paperwork was in order. What saved Walton's job was his talent as a salesperson. He was so good at closing deals that he was able to add about $25 of commission to his salary every month. In 1942, after just about 18 months of working at JCPenney, Walton had to quit his job to serve during World War II as part of the U.S. military. Before leaving the military in 1945, Sam had reached the rank of captain and had gotten married. At the end of his military service, he and his wife Helen had settled in Arkansas for a while. During their time there, Sam gained more experience in the retail business by working as a manager for a Ben Franklin Variety Store franchise. While working as a manager, Sam realized the potential that retail and variety stores had. This led him to take a risk of owning his own variety store. He borrowed $20,000 from his father-in-law, which he added to $5,000 he had saved from his time in the military. With this money, he bought a Ben Franklin variety store in Newport, Arkansas. It was in this store that Sam decided to implement his policy of pricing products below what other retailers would charge. With this principle in play and with a lot of hard work, Sam's business grew unbelievably fast. He soon tripled his business. In just three years, the sales volume of his variety store grew from $80,000 to $125,000. Sam's store was an obvious hit. And when Sam's success caught the attention of a particular someone, things started to go south for his business. 
The Quit Notice Great success comes with a lot of baggage. Not everyone will be happy about what you've achieved. Some may be bitter, and some may be outright jealous. But every successful person can only hope that the people who are unhappy with their success aren't in a position to hinder their progress. Unfortunately, this wasn't the case with Sam and his business. By 1950, Sam's franchise had become the leading Ben Franklin store in a six-state region. His low prices and wide variety were drawing in customers in droves. When this caught the attention of the shop's landlord, he wanted Sam's success for himself, or more precisely for his son. The landlord wanted to reclaim the store and the franchise for himself, but Walton had no intention of selling out. So, the landlord did the one thing he could do. He refused to renew Sam's lease on the store. With no other option, Sam was forced out, and the landlord paid him $50,000 for the store's fixtures and inventory. Sam still had a year left on the lease, but his store was as good as sold. Instead of giving up after such a disheartening experience, Sam Walton took this as a lesson and took steps to move on and start a new store. But starting over would prove more difficult than it seemed. Right at the beginning of his journey to start a new store, Sam encountered a hurdle, and the more he tried to scale this hurdle, the more impossible it seemed. Starting over Walton must have known that starting a new store would not be a breeze, but he most likely wasn't expecting the situation he encountered when trying to choose a location for the store. To set up their new store, Sam and his wife left Newport for Bentonville, Arkansas. They found a small discount store, and this time, he negotiated a 99-year lease. Smart move, but there was one problem. He wanted to expand his business into the shop next door. After presenting his offer to rent the next door shop, the owner refused. As the persistent businessman that he was, Sam refused to settle. He returned and asked to rent the shop, and again, the owner turned him down. Walton's request was rejected a total of six times, after which he finally gave up. But that wasn't the end for Walton. Unknown to him, his father-in-law paid the owner of the shop one more visit. He offered the shop owner $20,000 to secure the lease. The owner accepted, and finally, Walton's problems were over. He had just enough money from the sale of his previous store to seal the deal and also repay his wife's father. On May 9, 1950, his new five-and-dime store was officially open for business. Although there were a few other variety stores in the area, Walton's consistently low prices and attention to customer service made his store outshine the others. Soon, the store was experiencing a level of success similar to that of his previous store. In just one year of business, he had increased the amount of sales from 75,000 to 105,000. Inspired by the simultaneous success of his Newport and Bentonville stores, Sam opened more Ben Franklin franchises. By 1960, he owned 15 stores in three states in the U.S. Sam encouraged the managers of his stores to invest financially in the business. This motivated them to take the business with even more dedication. The same year, Sam decided to open up his very own discount store, which he called the Walmart Discount City Store. To Sam, it was an experiment, but to many others, it was an idea that was bound to fail. The First Walmart Even with 15 stores by 1960, Walton wasn't seeing as much profit considering the amount of effort he was putting in. This was when he came up with a new plan. He would have to slash prices even further, in the hopes of making his profit through increased volume of sales rather than a wide profit margin. When he approached the company that owned his store's franchise with this idea, they turned him down firmly. With this rejection, he decided to strike out on his own and implement this incredibly risky plan. To raise capital, Sam had to mortgage his house and borrow lots of money. He opened the first Walmart in Rogers, Arkansas. Walton wasn't the first one offering low prices at the time. In fact, he had big, already established competition that would easily have pushed him off the map. But Sam used to say, most of us don't invent ideas. We take the best ideas from someone else. So to be able to compete, Walton chose to set up his stores in smaller towns, while his competition was concentrated on big cities. It worked. People were thrilled that they didn't have to travel long distances to get good prices. Sam's competition thought that it was impossible for him to sustain his lower prices indefinitely and that his business would eventually fail. 
Even brand owners refused to support his stores with merchandise because they weren't confident that Walton's low prices could be a profitable idea. Unfortunately, Walton ran into some trouble when he opened his second Walmart store, further convincing people that his business model was an impractical and unprofitable one. Despite all the opposition and the hitches along the way, Sam and his team managed to pick themselves up and prove themselves right. After three years of struggle, the company had established 24 stores all over Arkansas with over $12.5 million in sales. Walmart went public in 1970, with Walton and his family retaining 61% of the company. At a point, Walmart was opening new stores at a rate of about 100 per year. As Walmart grew, Walton diversified his store's retail formats, creating Sam's Club discount warehouses in 1983 and Walmart supercenters in 1988. In 1985, Walton was declared the richest man in America by Forbes magazine, and by 1990, Walmart was officially the largest retailer in the United States and started branching out internationally. In March 1992, Walton was awarded the Medal of Freedom by President George H.W. Bush. During his acceptance speech, he articulated the core purpose of his company, saying, If we work together, we'll lower the cost of living for everyone. We'll give the world an opportunity to see what it's like to save and give a better life. Today, Walmart has over 11,000 stores worldwide and rakes in an annual revenue of over $500 billion, of which about $14 billion is net income. For eight consecutive years, Walmart has occupied the number one spot on the Fortune 500 list as the largest corporations in the United States by revenue. It's almost hard to believe that all this started with a farm boy that was constantly being told that he would fail. Sam Walton's most important advice to us is, Swim upstream. Go the other way. Ignore the conventional wisdom. For more inspiring business stories, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel. This is Planet Biz.